Hey everyone, Team UDF here for some Oblivion Team UDF news. Very old fashioned Team UDF news here. Don't you ask, we're going to run around Oblivion and have some fun. Here's a general update. The semester has started. It's going to be quite a busy one. I am teaching four classes between two different college campuses, and I am taking two graduate level courses in mathematics. So there's going to be quite a bit going on. If I happen to drop off the face of the earth for a week or so, it's probably because of midterms or something. Ridiculous involving that. Let's head up to Frostcrag. Why not? So, yes. I also don't know when I'll be live streaming. Those of you who have seen a live stream of mine already know I kind of do it at random. But I do like... What the heck? I do like to have some fun when we get to one. So, I don't know. At some point, I'll live stream. What I do for live streams, though, is I try to post an announcement of the live stream in the little YouTube feed thing. So you guys aren't completely in the dark or anything. And yes, so with that, let's go to our first topic. The hero store is near here. I think it's up there somewhere. I don't know. All right, first topic. And that would be the next horror LP on the channel. It is going to be Outlast. Outlast is the next horror LP on the channel. A couple people uh, suggested it on the front page of my channel, and I had never heard of it before, so I just kind of looked it up and Impulse bought it, and it is quite fun so far. I don't know, maybe a minor gripe I have with it is that it seems a little too cryptic at times. But, I don't know, it kind of fills out with the atmosphere and everything at the same time, so maybe it's supposed to be that way. But it is a fun game thus far. I have no idea when I'll start uploading it, because clearly I'm doing other things right now, like Dead Island, Riptide, and uh, Evoland, and stuff like that. So yes, at some point, we will get to <gasps> Outlast. Alright. Well, the next topic is going to be very short. It's just regarding WWE 14. Nothing bad is happening to the series. I just want to point out that I am aware it's going a little slow. It's a little slower than I would like to have been progressing thus far, uh, but actually there's nothing wrong with like the recording method or anything. It's been working out quite nicely so far. I have plenty of story ideas still, and hopefully we'll get some guests on the show at some point. I kind of wanted to do a special guest kind of thing. So yes, uh, more WWE 14 coming soon, hopefully. Oh, the next thing we're going to bring up is kind of just gauging and interest and some things, I don't know, I'm going to recommend a couple ideas and I'm going to see what you guys think about them. But the first idea I'm going to suggest here is a Yu-Gi-Oh! Machinima series. Like, kind of a skit series. Kind of similar to Tales from Cyrodiil, except, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I would do this in Skyrim, but because I don't have any series going on in Skyrim right now. And I have a lot to say about Skyrim later on, so just be patient and we'll get there. Uh, but yes, uh, someone introduced me a few people actually introduced me to this program called Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro and it actually is very easy to record duels off that so I could do some I don't know little goofy series on that if anyone's interested so that's the the first idea I will peg your way and maybe we can do random duels online as well I don't know mainly I'm looking forward to the storytelling aspect and I don't know building decks for characters and things all right so that's the first idea I'll suggest it's the more straightforward of the two here comes the second one, though. The second idea is rather complex. What I'm going to suggest here is I want to gauge your interest in an interactive Let's Play. Uh, what that means is I would play some game, like, it, the, the games I was thinking about, or the games, yeah, I was thinking about were Fallout New Vegas, Oblivion, hello Oblivion, and, I don't know, something like Knights of the Old Republic, some other, like, big huge RPG that would take a while to finish, I don't know. So, the premise of the interactive Let's Play is that I would make the character, but it would be a brand new character regardless of the game it's in, and you guys would actually help me in molding the decisions and the personality of this character. So, like, if I went into Fallout New Vegas, I mean, I know nothing about hey. Fallout New Vegas, so it would be a, a brand new start there. Oblivion, I wouldn't mind. I don't know, maybe that would be an excuse to research more about that Nerim thing, but... I don't know. Uh, these would also be with mods, by the way, so even though I don't know anything about Fallout, like if you guys are interested in a Fallout uh, version of this interactive Let's Play, I would gladly throw in some mods you guys have suggested and stuff. Suggested. And yeah. So, like, literally the only thing I would do on my own is probably make the character. And then we would just start... I would do, like, the little intro sequence or whatever, and then you guys decide what I do next. And whenever we reach a crossroads, I have you guys determine what adventure the character goes on next. And maybe some input about what kind of person the character is. Like, I don't know, is 
Is this going to be a good character, a bad character, a, a neutral character, kind of a chaotic character that just does what he wants? It, it could be anything that you guys vote on. I would take it with a majority vote, so I definitely mean majority. If six people vote for option A and five people vote for option B, I'm going with option A, even though only one more person voted for it. We would do straight majority. Uh, I've seen this done a couple other times. I know that some guy is like really famous for doing a, a Morrowind interactive Let's Play that lasted like two and a half years or something. I don't know if I'll, I'll, I'll quite get uh, to that level of insane, but I, I don't know. I do expect this thing to go on for quite a while since it's an interactive LP and it's a potentially huge RPG. But yes, I do want to know what you guys think about that. And not only what you think about it, but if you do like the idea, I want to know what game you would prefer I do this in. Like I said, Fallout, Oblivion, something like that is preferred. I don't know if I'll buy any games like Dragon Age or anything. And honestly, let me let me probably shy you away from Dragon Age right now. Is The reason I probably won't do Dragon Age is because it's an EA game. And EA and Let's Players do not get along anymore. I'm not even sure if they ever got along. So yeah, we'll probably avoid things like Dragon Age. Uh, but other than that, I don't know. And this idea will probably sound weirder as the episode progresses because, I don't know, but... Yeah, so, modded interactive Let's Play. Let me know what you think about it. I think I'll cut this segment off here. Let's talk about Tales from Citadel, Major's Guild, because we haven't used that joke in a while. Great. Uh, Tales 14 is complete. Tales 15 recording, I believe, is complete. I don't... I have to, like, gauge how long the episode is, but I might be finished with it. Uh, the reason I am not uploaded 14 yet is actually not because of, like, an editing problem or anything. I'm actually just holding back this time. Uh, what's going on is... I don't know, 14's not my favorite episode, <laughs> so I, like, want to... I kind of want to have a backup to upload close to it. If that makes any sense. It, typically, in the past with Tales, you guys have really liked the episodes that I've hated. So, it, it could just be a paranoia thing on my part. But I do want to jump ahead in Tales and get further ahead than where I'm at upload-wise. As opposed to just uploading the only episode I have ready and then you guys have to wait six months. I mean, I know we're waiting kind of a long time anyway, but still, I kind of want to get Tales a little more organized and ready to go. I also know that you guys mostly come to Tales for the comedy aspect as opposed for the story. I mean... If you really enjoy the story, I would actually like to know that, because I'm, I'm not sure if I'm even catering to anybody who enjoys story. They might just be here for the comedy, or, I don't know, the few goofy, crappily edited, edited uh, action scenes that I have every once in a while, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So I like to, I don't know, I try to present you guys with what you like. It doesn't always work out, though, like, I, I do enjoy telling a story, whether you think it's good or bad. So I do want to make room for the story. 15 has, like, a lot of story progression. 14 has some story progression. It's, I don't know, it's mostly filler just to goof around with something. Uh, 16 is probably going to be story-oriented as well. And I don't know, I just don't want you guys to feel bad if you've waited so long and then you get a story episode as opposed to, like, a, a comedy episode or whatever you were looking for. Oh, well, this is Dragon Claw. I thought this was familiar. I was here for Tales 15. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Okay, that means I was just over here for that scene that I'm alluding to that you have no chance of seeing yet, but yes. Oh, the other thing I want to bring up with Tales is going back to the live stream idea. I think I suggested this another time, but I really do want to do it at some point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to live stream Oblivion. And let me let me put a disclaimer here. My live stream is very modest, okay? I have my upload rate sucks, so this is not going to be anything phenomenal quality-wise. My stuff never usually is, but yeah, this thing definitely not. I have to, like, stream at 400 bitrate or something really, like, desperately low to make it not drop a bunch of frames. But what I really want to do anyway is come into Oblivion on a stream on uh, my Twitch channel and say, okay, here are, here are some characters, let's uh, suggest things that we want to be done in the episode. I'm actually going to have you guys make the suggestions for the episodes, and I'll see if I can get the characters to act them out, and then we'll publish that as a Tales from Cyrodiil episode. This is actually very reminiscent of Scenes from a Hat, from Whose Line Is It Anyway, where the audience gives out all the suggestions and the actors try to perform everything. 
Uh, you oh. don't. You wouldn't have to stick to the story or anything. Oh. Like even if when the previous episode is about hunting down Wraith Guard or something, and I don't know, we we can do whatever for the uh, Adlib episode. Uh, not Adlib, uh, the. We can call it more of a Mad Libs episode, I guess. You guys are inserting whatever you want, and I try to make it fit. So yeah, something like that. I. The, the idea of kind of an interactive Tales from Cyrodiil episode. And then at the same time, you guys might have an idea of how I make some of my skits. I mean, I, I'm certainly not the best when it comes to making uh, skits or machinima or anything. But yeah, I don't know. Some people have always been curious how I've done it. And I guess if I was streaming, making an episode, you would get a better idea of how it's done. So yeah, that could be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Other than that, I think we're pretty good on Tails. Everything's coming along nicely. The voice actors and actresses are doing okay. So, I think we're pretty good there. Alright. Let's get to the bulk of the episode now, because one of these is going to be ridiculously long. Question one. Uh, are you going to play Elder Scrolls Online now that we are aware it's, like, subscription-based and stuff like that? So, here's what I decided last night. Let's just go ahead and decide right now that, yes, I will get Elder Scrolls Online... And I will try it with you guys. I say try because, I don't know, if you've paid attention or if you're just a veteran of the channel from the past, I don't think I'm that good at MMORPGs. I never quite grasped all the concepts of what makes a good MMO player. So, like, things regarding EVE Online and stuff like that, I was never horribly good at it. But what I really do want to try is getting involved with the Iron Wolves and things. We had some fun on Minecraft that one time with the Iron Wolves. And I think the Iron Wolves could take Elder Scrolls Online by storm. If we have, like, people and things similar to that. I also wouldn't mind running or helping to run the Iron Wolves, even if I'm not that good at combat or something. Just so I could say I'm having more interactive fun with you guys. Because I will be honest, all the interactive stuff I do with you guys is pretty fun. The the Minecraft stuff we did was a blast. When, I, when you guys jump in with Planetside or Left 4 Dead... Any other game I'm randomly playing on Steam, that also turned out to be a good time. Dungeon Defenders, stuff like that in the past. And I don't know, despite my time in this semester being very limited, I do want to still try to get more interactive stuff done with you guys. So that's also why I've recommended the Interactive Tales from Cyrodiil episode and the Interactive Let's Play stuff. I'm just kind of trying to get more involved with you guys. Because it does lead to good things. I don't know to what degree I'll be able to record Elder Scrolls Online. I'm hoping we're at least allowed to, because that would be really fantastic to have records of things the Iron Wolves do, uh, does on YouTube, or if we're just screwing around, can go back and remember a funny moment. Maybe some of our defeats, some of our victories, things like that. I just want to be able to record records of it and upload it somewhere. So hopefully Bethesda's pretty okay with that when the game is public and fully released. Because certainly I know they don't want you recording closed beta footage and stuff. But yeah, so that's what I'm thinking for Elder Scrolls Online. Again, let's just go ahead and say I'll get it, and I'll try it out. Even if I end up wasting money on it, because it is Elder Scrolls. And man, I love Elder Scrolls. It's one of my favorite series of all time, even if I don't always get things on the channel with it. So I am looking forward to trying it out with you guys. I would give it a good month or two before I would let you guys know if I'm going to dip out early or something. But yes, I do fully intend on playing it right now. So let's have some fun with Elder Scrolls Online. We'll probably start setting up something in the Steam community on the Team UDF page somewhere regarding the Iron Wolves. I'm sure Grunt will help get that organized because Grunt really loved the Iron Wolves stuff. So I'm sure he's looking forward to helping me organize that stuff. And we'll see if we can get, like, I don't know, maybe not formal roles ready, but we'll just have some ideas here and there of what we want our members to do. And scoof around and have a good time. I'm really, really, really hoping, and this this comes from me not having read up on a lot of Elder Scrolls Online, so maybe some of these features have already been confirmed or denied, but I really would prefer doing something more than just questing and raiding. I really don't want the World of Warcraft experience. I want something more than that. Like, look at all these ruins and things in Oblivion. I want to be able to either build or control some kind of fortress or something. I don't know. Something that the Iron Wolves can call its own. As opposed to just doing whatever. So that's kind of where I stand on that. I am looking forward to it, but I am hoping it's just more than the usual MMO. Like I said, maybe EVE Online in the past really pampered me, because now I've, I've seen 
an MMO that has so much more than just the usual quest raid, quest raid, quest raid, PvP on, on occasion. So yes, Elder Scrolls Online, we can now fully complete that discussion. Uh, also, let me know if you guys want, like, I don't know, I don't think we can do forums on the Steam community, but let me know if you want a set area, like I said, to discuss Elder Scrolls Online, and Grunt and I will try to set that up for you. Question two, as an enemy comes to find me. Question two, oh god, there it is. What are your match settings for WWE 14 Universe Mode? And it's a kind of funny question. I get the premise of it. I seem to be getting really good matches in WWE 14. Far more epic than what the CPU was giving me in WWE 13. If I wanted a good match in 13, I pretty much had to play it myself. But in WWE 14, I'm getting away with pretty much letting the CPU do all the matches for me. So that's really nice. Anyway, um, I don't have too many special things set, actually. I have them on... Let's see, I don't... It, I know it's not Legend. I do not have them on Legend. It is on Hard Mode or the one right before Legend. And what I also do is... It's strange. I, I up the damage on finishers and weapons to kind of get a more realistic feel. But I've noticed we have a lot of matches where they're kicking out of finishers anyway. It might have to do with the fact that I have the momentum bar speed at its highest. So, I, I don't know. I will look again. If I find anything else specific that I might have messed with, I'll let you know. But, other than that, I didn't do anything really specific with the match settings. I, I don't know if I'm just getting lucky with the CPU or what, but there are some good matches out there to be had. Okay, I'll be honest with you here. For this next question, I actually have notes and things I have written out, so I might just stand still, or I might actually even exit Oblivion so I can get through all these notes. Uh, question three regards the lack of mod reviews that have been on the channel lately. And this actually isn't a question that one particular person asked. I just know it's something that's generally going around the channel. Like, I'm sure people have wondered why I've never made Skyrim mod reviewing a main thing on the channel. Um, maybe the answer is a bit more in-depth than you would expect, but I will try to explain what I'm talking about here. Uh, so this is a long-haul one. For me personally, I've never made them a main thing because of the community. Let me make a disclaimer before I continue. I know before that I've made arguments in favor of persisting with something in spite of the individuals who surround that thing, and that sometimes it's not worth letting other people ruin something for you that can be fun. I get that and I advocate that still. But when I sit down and try to do a Skyrim mod, in particular Skyrim mods, I'm mostly reminded of what I'm supporting. And I, like, I can't bring myself to support it. That's the line for me. So let's start with some Skyrim mod creators themselves. Not all, but some. I've kind of said this in past videos, if a creator's poor attitude cannot be mentally separated from the quality of their content, that individual ruins their own potential success. Uh, there were several self-entitled, I'm gonna be kind of mean here, there were several self-entitled mod creators just kind of snapping at their fans for a product that was meant to be enjoyed by just thousands of people. I, I really got tired of seeing it in Skyrim and thinking that they was, these were going to be the kind of people I'm supporting in mod reviews. Uh, trust me though, there are good mod reviewers, out, uh, good mod creators out there rather. Uh, we've had some fun with like Super Skyrim Bros, the guy from, uh, f what was it, Forgotten Mountain Keep was on the channel posting things about his future mod ideas. We had some good time with the Akaviri things, uh, the Leveler's Tower guy from Ancient Towers and Oblivion came back. Those, there's some real good ones out there. But I really want to be realistic here. The Skyrim community was overrun by a crowd that is vastly different from the Oblivion one. And don't think I'm just focusing on the mod creators here. Uh, some of them really do try to put out a product for the purpose of giving their fans something to enjoy. They really do. But there are... There are the pretentious ones who want nothing more than their two minutes of fame on the Skyrim Spotlight videos. I've actually spoke with one such mod creator in the past whose mod is very popular from what I've seen, and he claimed he did not make it for the fans and didn't care what they thought. Bullcrap you didn't! Why else did you make it? You toiled over the construction kit's quirks and swore over when it crashed and screwed up your idea for whatever for countless hours, and then you uploaded it to the Steam Workshop or the Nexus or whatever. The person never answered me about this. Like, really? Why did you do all that then? if it wasn't for the fans, and I was really kind of ticked off about it. It was very disappointing. I'm going to scroll through my notes here, I'm sorry. 
So it seriously confuses the heck out of me that there are people out there who do this, and they don't have a good reason for doing it. But again, it's not all on the mod creators. There are good mod creators out there. I want to talk about the mod community as a whole for a minute regarding Skyrim. I recognize that the Skyrim mod community is different from the Oblivion one, and that they don't really care about mod reviews. They, they don't. Instead, what they do, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, is they do these spotlight videos wherein I listen to someone talk about a mod for up to five minutes, and truth be told, the only thing I learn about the mod is that it is a mod. Uh, I don't know, I never get anything else out of these spotlight videos. Uh, but hang on, because I'm also not fully bashing these things either, I'll get to why later. I'm also not being the holy man here, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that long play uh, mod reviews are the best way to go, no, no, no. Uh, these spotlight videos are just a different perspective with a, a different community value on them. Oblivion liked full mod reviews, play through the whole mod and be done with it. Uh, Skyrim just seems to like these spotlights, uh, though at the same time this change is not one I support. Uh, here's why, is because it actually doesn't encourage any community growth. You tell people to go download a mod, they go do it, and everyone is back in their own isolated world. That's the end of it. We're not really building anything by doing that. We're just re-advertising the mod when the mod creators could have done that themselves. It almost reminds me of some mainstream Let's Players. You grab your paycheck, you ignore the comments, and you be on your merry way. The silliest part to me, though, is when the Spotlight video is making more money advertising the mod than the mod creator got to actually create the mod. And here's a hint for those of you not familiar. Usually the mod creator doesn't get paid to build their product. Yeah, uh, also, I've monetized review videos in the past. I have no problem admitting that. So maybe I'm just being as much of a cheat if you want to look at it that way. But at least I invest some time into the product that these guys worked so hard on. So do Grunt and a couple of others. But uh, the Skyrim mod community just does not swing that way. So that's why I've never made them a main thing on the channel. It just didn't seem like there would be a point to it. And I'm not really helping anything in the long run. I mean, if people are going to accept less, give them less. They certainly deserve it. That goes for movies, too. I mean, if a big-time Hollywood writer can produce a really terrible movie that grosses millions of dollars, why not just produce more terrible movies? Why put in the effort? Anime and video games go the same way. If we never ask for more, they'll give us less. So I actually say, even though I don't support it, good on the Spotlight videos for finding an easy way out to a complicated problem. Because if their fans are going to accept their laziness, they should take it. Who wouldn't? So yeah, I do love Elder Scrolls. Yes, you bet I do. I just cannot support a Skyrim mod community that I don't think I fit in. So trust me when I say I know, I know a lot of my fans only stick around for Elder Scrolls, and they only want to see more mod reviews. But as far as Skyrim goes, do not ever expect it to be a full-time thing. There are, uh, there are some mods that I'm looking forward to. Like, I know, I, I care about what you guys do. Like, someone sent me a Skyrim mod that they were working on. I still have to get to that. And certainly there are more mods here in Oblivion that need to be done. I feel like I've done most of the big mods in Oblivion. That's why I haven't come back here that often. But there are still, like, a couple recommended ones that you guys suggested in the past. And I know I've, I've been a, a bit slow getting to them. But really, those are my, those are my feelings here. I just really don't think that I my style of review fits into the Skyrim mod community. It's just not a popular style. And I know it's not about popularity, but again, I, I don't see the point if I'm not really helping anyone here. Uh, let me see. I think those are... I think those are all the notes I had. Uh, yeah, again, I will remind you guys of what I said in 2010 or something. Uh, this is a gaming channel, not an Elder Scrolls channel. I love Elder Scrolls. I mean, I do Tales from Cyrodiil and stuff like that. I recommended the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Machinima and whatever, if you guys want to screw around with that idea, but I, I just can't do mod reviews forever. I do have to do other things and feel like I'm, I don't know, being uh, catering to a broader audience as opposed to just one set audience. I don't know. Hopefully you guys understand. What I can offer you, though, is other types of ideas like Tales, or the co-op stuff, games on Steam, interactive LPs or whatever. So again, that's mainly what I'm looking for this episode is provide me with some feedback on the interactive LP and we'll see what happens. I also do appreciate any feedback you guys have on the Skyrim modding situation, uh, why I haven't made them into a main thing on the channel. Because I know, I know Elder Scrolls is the big thing on this channel. It will probably always have the highest views per average, uh, highest average views per video on the channel. But again, I just, I, it's impossible for me to just do that forever. I, I want to do other games too, so we do other games. 
And in this case, I don't really think... I don't really particularly appreciate ah. the Skyrim mod community the way it's set up right now. So I don't know, I don't think I'm a good fit for it. So yeah, give me feedback on stuff, the interactive LP. Uh, we'll see if we can get somewhere. Other than that, I've kept you here too long. So I will see you next time for more unorganized chaos on Team UDF Gaming. Thanks for watching, everyone. Boy!